Oh, right. Well, I guess we got to do this the old-fashioned way. Sometimes when technology works, it works. And when it doesn't, it doesn't. What can I tell you? <laughs> All right. This is my third attempt. So three strikes and then we'll be out. If you guys can hear me, can you just uh, mention or say something in the bar? Like, hello? Can you guys hear me? I know it's one person in here. I don't know if that who that may be, but can you hear me? Can you just uh, type something in the comment box to let me know? All right. Well, I'm going to try to go along with this and hope this works out. Can you hear me? I see it's a couple people in here. Can you hear me? If you can, can you just say hello so I'll know you can hear me? Can anyone hear me? Oh, right. Well, in case you can, I still see there's one person in here. Tonight's show is guidelines to constructing your carpet cleaning business model. And tonight, I want you guys to understand, it's not about how much you can make on a job. It's not about, you know, what type of equipment you have. A business model has to do one thing. It has to take care of you and your family. You have to be able to pay your bills. If you have children, you want to be able to send them to college. You know, it's called a higher education. You want to be able to plan family vacations. Or maybe if you're a single person, you want to schedule a s single vacation. But the point is, if you're going in business for yourself, it all starts when you're constructing that business model. Listen, it's not about making $500 or $1,000 on a job. Now, before you, you know, click out of here, I want you to understand something. When I say that, I simply mean that you want to make sure it's a realistic expectation. It's a realistic goal. So when I tell you that you should have prices like two rooms in a hall for $49.99, three rooms in a hall for $69.99, and four rooms in a hall for $99.99, those are prices that will make your phone ring. Those are prices that will get you in the door. Do you understand what I'm saying? Guys and ladies, you have to set your business model up so it can take care of your needs. If you can't make monthly, weekly profit projections and are able to meet them, then you're not really running a business. You have a high quality hobby. And if you have a truck mount, so many of you guys have a nice truck mount. You guys, if you still don't have a projected income, you're not running a business. You have to understand that. At least when I tell you that you can have three jobs a day, and you know you can do a job for $100 doing carpets. So if you get three of those a day, you're making $300. Monday through Friday, you can make fifteen of not a hundred uh, more money, fifteen hundred at your least. That guarantees you six thousand dollars a month. Now I'm not saying you don't want to stop there, but see in your business model, that's a weekly and a easy monthly projection, and it's realistic. I know you guys are saying, Roger, man. You crazy. I'm never going to charge two rooms in the hall for $50. But see, what you don't understand is you're not really going to do it that way or for that price. Because once you get there and you look around, you're going to be able to talk to the client and do what we're so good at. Clean it. But you have to get the phone to ring. And people don't respect our industry enough that if you say that you're going to do high quality cleaning, you're not going to get enough phone calls to stay in business. People want to know a bottom line, even if it's not the bottom line 
that they're going to receive. They want a bottom line. And so let's look at some things right here when you're making your business model. All right. This is an every door direct mailer, an EDDM that works and works very well. See, the first thing at the top, it catches carpet cleaning $24.99 a room. But then as you look closer, it says when you get four rooms or more. But see, that's not the part that's going to catch their eye. And then then you go down here, it says two rooms in a hall for $49. Steam clean only. Up to 15 by 17 is the square footage. Three rooms in a hall for $69. Four rooms in a hall for $99. Five rooms in a hall for $139. See, this will get them to pick up the phone. They won't throw this in the trash right away. But then on this side, it tells them how they can get their sofa and love seat clean for $99. $25 off area rug cleaning, $0.69 cents a square foot for towel and grout, and then the pet odor enzyme topical treatment is $25.99, and then it has all the other services that we offer. It has the logo with the visa and everything. This is an EDDM or a postcard that never fails. Because they're looking at these prices and this is what makes them call. See, what you guys don't understand, we're never really going to be able to compete with Stanley Steamer or Coits or Zero Res or any other of those larger companies. Because they have the budgets that we don't have. See, this is what well, I don't re I don't know what that uh, person just said here. Let me see. Um. I'm sorry, I'm not charging. Right, okay, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I thought someone had um <laughs> had had a comment. So anyway, guys and ladies, but now, let's not stop there. Let's say you're charging by the square foot, okay? You still have to have something to get you in the door. So look, look at my business card. Yes, it starts at the business card. It says, BioClean. Is it time for professional carpet cleaning? And then it says, save $25 on your next carpet cleaning of three rooms or more. And one upholstered chair clean free. Now, do you understand? See, right away, I, in my model here, I know I have every business card I give out. I want them to hold on to it. I don't want it to get trashed right away. But then I'm still trying to be professional and on the back of the card, I have a picture of me, and then I tell them a little bit about me, a little bit of my bio, okay? See, this is a business card that sells. This will get the phone to ring. This business card is not a business card. It's a sales card because it's going to make them want to call me, if nothing more than to get that $25 off and that one chair clean for free. See, this is what I'm explaining to you in your business model. So if you do it by square feet, this is the type of specials you need to run. They need to get something free right away. So they'll call so it won't become trash. If you're charging by um, charging room pricing, this is how I suggest you do it. So the phone constantly rings. What you don't understand, if your phone's not constantly ringing then you don't have a good business model. So it's back to the drawing board. Now, this whole thing right here, carpet and upholstery cleaning, and then it has three rooms for $62, six rooms for $124, and then it has a sofa and love seat clean, oh, sofa clean for $55. Now, this is the business card I would give if I was doing room pricing. This business card is going to make them call. You see, this is okay because when I get there, I'm going to look over the carpet. I know they're going to need some traffic lane cleaner, which is pre-spray. 
I know they're going to probably need a pet odor treatment, so I'm going to explain to them. These prices are for steam cleaning only. And it says on the card here, hello, hello there. My name is Roger Lloyd, Roger, and I am your local carpet cleaner. Do you have stains, odors, or just dingy looking carpet? Well, call me, and it has my phone number, or visit my website, and it has my website. See, you guys have to understand, people don't look at carpet cleaning as a serious commodity. They don't look at it, I mean, that's all they look at it as, as a serious commodity. They don't look at it as a real service. So if you're in this business, you have to adapt. Remember the board going Star Trek? What did the board say? You will adapt. And that's what you have to do. You have to adapt. I know you want to be proud of your truck mount. I have one too. I know when you're blazing that heat and you got your wine in there and you just going back and forth. You just, man, this is good. I'm the man, I'm the man, or I'm the woman, I'm the woman. No. See, what you have to understand is it's still carpet cleaning to our clients. It's still a labor's job to our clients. So you have to construct your business model as such. You don't just want to, if you have $20,000, like the guy was saying in a portable group or whatever, you don't just want to buy an expensive truck mount. You want to buy a reasonable price truck mount, and then you want to have some money left over to buy a portable. You want to have some money left over to buy a rotary jet extractor. You want to have some money left over to buy a low moisture machine. You see all these pieces of equipment behind me? Do you see that? That is what I recommend for anyone starting out in the residential carpet cleaning business. Now, if you can buy a truck mount, so be it. But most of the guys I talk to can't afford it from the beginning. So if you have $6,500, which is reasonable to start this business, this package right here behind me is everything you need. Even the water claw to get up pet stains. You have to understand, one of the most, the 99 Excuse me, one of the most reasons people call you residentially is because they have pet stains. And so you have to have a water claw. You have to. I know what you guys are saying. Oh, no, Roger. I have a good wand or I have this type. I have a Tony Dang wand. I have a Devastator wand. You guys don't get it. You need to specialize equipment. So when you are in someone's house, you're showing them that you have things that they can't run to Home Depot or their whole harm. A hardware store and rent themselves. This is what separates you. But most of all, getting back to your business model, the construction of it. Three rooms, uh, three houses a day at at least a hundred dollars a pop. You want to at least try to get every job to a hundred dollars. That's not difficult. A lot of you can get it over, like I can. But it has to be a hundred dollars at three jobs a day. Now that's a business, that's a business plan. No, that's a marketing plan. But at least that's realistic. That's a guaranteed $300 a day. That's a goal that you can easily achieve. So by working Monday through Friday, you have made $1,500, if not more. Then you have Saturday and Sunday off. Now, if you choose to work Saturday and Sunday, that's considered overtime because you know how we're taught in this world. We go to school, we get a higher education, and then the world promises what? A job. That's it. If you do what you're supposed to do, you're promised a job in life. So Saturday and Sunday is always overtime on most nine to five jobs. So you have to look at it that way. If you decide to work a Saturday or Sunday, that's overtime for you. See, this is a realistic business model. Because if you're making $1,500 as your goal per week, in the way that I just explained it to you, and if you put this down in your business plan, these are realistic numbers. That's, that'll give you $1,500 a week, no less. A guaranteed $1,500, no less. So that guarantees you $6,000 a month, no less. Now, you went in business for yourself, hopefully, hopefully, 
to make more money than you would if you were working a nine to five. So $6,000 will definitely be more money than you would make guaranteed per month if you were work than if you were working a nine to five. But six thousand is the minimum that you would make a month. Six thousand dollars. Are you kidding me? So anything in any job, if you follow this model, you don't have to. I'm giving you an example. But if you follow this model, anything under that, you didn't you didn't do something right. Three jobs a day, Monday through Friday, is the model structure. And you're going to your goal or your minimum is a hundred dollars you want to bring out of each home. But then the reason why you want to structure it like the marketing card and biz and flyer I just showed you, because you want a flood of calls coming in. In order to guarantee that you keep this model, this 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 um three jobs a day, you have to have a flood of calls coming in. And you have to make it so appetizing, so appealing that they'll feel like if they don't call, uh, that they didn't lost something. And why wouldn't it? It's the same amount of money if they rented the machine from a grocery store and bought some products or whatever to have clean the carpet themselves. So that's the door opener. Then when you get in the door, that's when you want to sell. So your business model has to be realistic. If you set your goals at $100 a house, even with the portable, even with a low moisture machine, a CRB or whatever you have, you can get $100 out your typical client for at least no more than two hours worth of work. But you're only setting up three hours, a, three jobs a day. But see, the thing is also, you're only working in a 10 mile radius. So you're not draining all your gas out your vehicle. You're not tiring your helper out. And that's another thing. You have a realistic business model that's going to keep your workers working all week long. And that's another thing. That's another reason why we have so much hard time keeping help. Because we normally don't have a schedule that is easy for them to follow. If they knew they had to work every day between 9 to 5, now I'm not saying they're always going to work till 5, but they know this coming in every day at 9 o'clock, Monday through Friday, I bet you, I bet you, you will get better help and you will keep workers and they will work harder and they will work smarter for you. But see, it all is in how you set the business model up. See, I know, I was just in another group the girl had asked, um, she had got a commercial bid, and she was asking how she, she charged. You had some guys telling her to charge like 50, 60 cents a square foot, and it was 10,000 square feet. She's not getting $3,000, and even if they did pay her that, she would never be able to get them on a maintenance plan. See, that's what I'm saying. You don't want to have the cleaner's mentality. You have to understand the fortune isn't in the job you're doing today. The fortune is in how many times after in that year, every year, can you get that client to call you back? And the trick of it is every time they call you back, now you're becoming closer and closer in a relationship with them. So they will start allowing you to clean the furniture. They'll start allowing you to clean the towel and grout. They'll start allowing you to clean the wood floors, the mattresses, whatever you sell. Because now you are becoming a friend. You're becoming close. But most of all, they feel like you're reasonable. They feel like you haven't ripped them off. And let me tell you something else about a business model that's set up this way. Now, if you tell someone that you, you're going to um, two rooms in a hall for $50, I'm going to keep using that example. And then you get in there and you have a rotary jet extractor such as a RX-20, a Rotovac, or a T-Rex, whatever you have. And you tell them you could do restorative carpet cleaning, which is the deepest cleaning for residential carpet right now, and that would only cost them 20 more dollars a room. You already took that $50 already up to $90. 
Then you can tell them, we also have an upholstery cleaning special. I didn't know you had a living room, or you had a sofa and the um, love seat right here. We could throw that in and do that for you while we're cleaning the living room and dining room and stairs today. And that would make your whole um, first level ready to go. Well, how much is that, Roger? Well, just give me $200, and we'll just knock it all out for you while we're here. And then if you decide you want any deodorizer or a carpet protector afterwards, that would just be an additional $40. That's the deal I can give you today. Now, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you guys just hear what I said? And that preferred, that business model I just gave you, it started at two rooms in a hall for $50, because I had a rotary jet extractor for the restorative cleaning, I, I explained to her how it would scrub and steam the carpet at the same time for the maximum clean, showed her a video or whatever, and then I told her that I would uh, clean the furniture for 99 see she's already in the cleaning mode now, for another $100, she feels like for $200, whoa, she's getting her furniture clean, she's getting her carpet clean, but then, now I'm going to throw in, if you want deodorizer and carpet protector, if you want to give me $40 more, a flat out $240, I'll protect everything, I'll de deodorize everything, $240, guys, that's what you call a business model. It started, it started at $50 in the perception in her mind. But then, because she saw the value, remember the other video I just did. You market deals. You market a deal. When I say marketing, you're putting out there a deal that's unbelievable that they can't resist. They have to have it. Then when you get in there, you sell value. I just showed you how I easily went from $50 for two rooms in a hall to $240 for two rooms in a hall and adding on two pieces of furniture. Are you kidding me right now? See, you have to think. Now, right there, I'm already up with the first job. Remember, I'm trying to make $300 a day with three jobs. In the first job, I already have almost made my day quota, which is $300. And then, because it's so realistic, by the end of the week, which is your $1,500 goal, now you done already almost made $2,000. So now... At the end of the month, you your six thousand excuse me your six thousand dollar goal will almost be eight thousand dollars. But do you understand? See, I'm trying to show you the same way a bank would look at it. If you went to a bank or a loan company and you said, "Well, I want to buy a Rotovac, so I need um I need a loan for like uh, three thousand dollars," they're going to be like, "All right, well, I need um three months of pay stuff or three months of uh." Bank statements. So they're going to look. Now, if you have one week in a month making $300, you have another week making $700, you have another week making $1,500, then you got a horrible week of making $200. See, they're going to see how this fluctuate throughout the three months. And they're going to be like, I don't know. I don't think we can give you that loan. Because, see, a bank is looking for stability. A loan officer is looking for stability. And so when you're making your business model, I'm trying to explain to you that you want your business model to have stability. You want it to be stabilized. So if you can go in a bank and you can show them three bank statements of $6,000 or more for three months, they will be happy to give you a loan for $3,000. You'll probably walk out of the bank with that money that day so you can call me up and order your mighty T-Rex. <laughs> oh, I'm joking, but I'm not. Anyway, the point is this. You want to structure your business model so it has a foundation. Don't say stuff like, oh, I want to charge X and X amount of dollars. Um, If somebody has five rooms, I'm going to try to get $300. No, 
Those aren't realistic expectations and they'll fail. You have to have a foundation that reeks where your phone will constantly ring. People have to see a deal. They have to taste it. They have to feel it. They have to absorb it. Listen. The carpet cleaning industry is struggling. It's struggling. But there are a few of you, because every time I'm ready to quit trying to help, there's always a few of you that call me up and are really trying to be successful. But you have to have realistic expectations. You can't tell someone that's bidding 10,000 square feet of carpet, oh, you should go in there and charge them $3,000. First of all, they're going to throw you out. They're never even going to consider you for a commercial maintenance plan, nor a residential maintenance plan. So you're just, you're, you're fighting to get the job today. Now think about how much it took for this young lady to obtain even a, be able to give a bid for 10,000 square feet. And then she's going to go in there and try to gut them from the door. Oh, I want $3,000. Are you crazy right now? She needs to tell them. She wants um, $1,056, which is 10, per, 10 cents a square foot for low moisture. If they want a restorative or deep steam cleaning, that's going to cost them a little more. She has to explain to them because there's more time, labor, and chemical involved. So therefore, she has to charge them 15 cents a square foot, which would have gave her $1,500. But then, after everything is said and done, after everything is said and done, she can go back to them with her commercial maintenance plan and try to keep them on some type of six-month schedule. But if she go in and she tells them she wants $3,000 from the door, she's not going to get it. You can't think about the job today. The fortune isn't in the job today. The fortune is in the follow-ups. Did you hear what I said? Ups with an apostrophe S. How many times they're going to follow up and use you again and again and again? Your business model also, just like I just told you, she gave them two options. One with the low moisture cleaning, one with the hot water extraction. See, that's why you can't just buy a truck mount and think you're in business. Because everybody's not going to want their carpet steam clean. That, that, that's a fad anymore. A lot will, but not everyone. So, but plus, the fact that she can give them two options gives them two choices to choose her and her. You have to make your business make sense. I'm not impressed by what piece of equipment you use. I'm not impressed by what, pe what piece of equipment you're trying to buy. What's going to impress me is your consistency of your business financial structure. Your profit projections. Are you, are you meeting them? Are they even realistic? Oh, here's one that's going to hurt your feelings. Do you even have any? Oh, my business model doesn't, uh, it doesn't allow cheap prices. My business model doesn't allow, uh, 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 portables. My business model doesn't allow, uh, low moisture. Well, my friend, you need to think about adjusting your so-called business model. Listen, your customers don't think nor do they care the way you do about the carpet cleaning industry. And that is our fault because we're so divided. But because we're so divided, we have to play the game and we have to play the game to win. So we have to give them what they expect. I told you the other day about the dollar store guy. See, he figured if he made a store that put a dollar sign on out front, that would get everybody to come in because all they're thinking is all the things they're going to get for their money. And that's what you have to do. So if you have to tell them two rooms in a hall for $50 and then show them, tell them about rotary jet extraction to get them to get to a hundred for the two rooms. And then if you tell them 
that you can do the sofa and love seat for another hundred dollars and then you'll deodorize and uh per carpet protect everything for forty dollars see all of that they're thinking for two hundred and forty dollars i got my carpets deep clean i got my uh furniture steam clean i got my step steam clean i got the hallway steam clean now i even got deodorizer and i have carpet protector do you see the value see they need to feel and absorb everything for that 240 dollars and once you get used to doing that you'll be able to go in to all three houses all day long, every day, and make your mark will be $240. It won't even be a hundred dollars no more. So that takes you from six thousand dollars all the way up to a whopping eighty two hundred dollars for the month and not spotchy. This is consistently because see what you have to also think about in your business model, since your phone is going to be ringing all like this and you're out doing the cleaning, you have to get a virtual assistant, someone like Jill's office to answer your calls and schedule all your jobs. And they will understand that you want three jobs a day, five days a week. That's their job. Now that's taking off your plate altogether. That should be in your business model. Who's going to handle my phone calls? Now, another thing that's very important, your software that you're using that's doing your invoicing and handling your clients. Well, we have Service Monster, we have House Call Pro, and they have, we have some others that I can't even think of right now. But you need to think about this and see House Call Pro, like for me, the, the girls that answer my phone, my virtual receptionist from Jill's office, she's trained to use House Call Pro. So after she answers the phone, she puts them right in so it rings on my phone and I see my schedule. I don't handle any of this. I All I have to do is worry about doing what most of us carpet cleaners are good at, cleaning. See, this is a realistic business model. And I know what you guys are saying. Yeah, Roger, that sounds good, man. But how much do all that cost? Well, let's see. Jill's office virtual assistant is $5 a month for your Google Voice phone number. And then it's $125 for every call that they take. And it's a dollar fifty for every call that they would need to make for you. If you want them to make any. But then they put everything in your house call pro or your service monster software. So you don't even have to worry about taking your customer's information and scheduling it. And then most of all, you also want to think about the distance. This is very important in your business model, the guidelines of it. How far do you want to work? How far do you want to work? Well, another thing about having reasonable prices, you don't have to drive 30 miles. You don't have to drive 20 miles. You could do 10 miles, 15 miles, and your schedule still stay full. I don't understand and I know most of the guys that would know this information are going to charge you. But I'm giving it to you free. I'm giving it to you raw. Because if you don't understand how to make a business model, how can you ever run a true business? You have to make a realistic business model. You honestly, you might have to start out with a portable machine. Don't be ashamed. A lot of us did. I know I did. You might have to start out with a low moisture machine. You might have to start out with a CRB machine. But that's starting out. And you'll grow into a portable. You'll grow into a truck mount. But you'll be able to afford it. You'll be able to get loans for it. And most of all, your phone will continue to ring. Do you know the number one problem that carpet cleaners have is that their phone doesn't ring enough. And I know, here we go, this is my favorite. Hey, Roger, man, 
I got Google AdWords, man. Um, and I got Facebook. And um, I, I, I get my phone ringing. Okay. But see, I don't know what year and era you living in. But Google AdWords is expensive. Google AdWords is expensive. Facebook is not cheap. It's not that expensive as, as Google AdWords. But it's not cheap. So, you want to eliminate how much money you have to put out for advertising and have a very good customer retention program so every time you get a customer, you keep them for what? For life. For life. You want them to start referring you. If she can say, hey, Betty, um, yeah, I got my carpets cleaned by Roger. Oh, how much he charged? Oh, girl, he real reasonable. I think he started out with like $100 for two rooms in my hallway. But, girl, he looks so good. I get the furniture clean, too. He only charged me like $240 or something like that for everything. Everything. And so Betty going to be like, really? He only charged you $240 for all that? Girl, he do a good job. Do it be smelling so good when he leave? I can't even tell. I have pets in the house. You guys don't understand. Your business model has to make realistic sense. So, knowing now that the carpet cleaning industry is never going to pay a fortune in the way you market, you have to keep your phones ringing, but by what the way that the people, consumers, the one you want to call you, need to be reached. And then you show them all the wonderful toys you have when you get there. All right. It's 2018. It's the year of the vision. Where residual income should be your only decision. Hey now. This is Roger Lloyd. Friday Night Insights. I hope I gave you something to think about. Don't get caught up in the cleaner's mentality thinking that you're going to have to make all this money and you have to charge high prices. You have to look at your expenses. You have to look at your uh, what you're trying to save. How many children do you have? How much do you realistically need to live off of? If you're married, and hopefully your wife or your husband works, but you will be the breadwinner because you should be bringing in as a single truck operator no less than $6,000 a month. So she or he might be bringing in $2,000, $2,500, maybe even $3,000 a month. But you already doubled that. That is a household that is making it. That's considered like middle class. All right. It's on you. It always was and it always will be. I don't know how nice I can be to you no more. Because you guys don't think like businessmen when you try to explain yourself. Think of the angles. Think about consistency. Whatever you're doing, if you don't have any consistency, it's not going to last. Other thing, the last thing I want to leave you with. The fortune is not in the job you get today. The fortune is in the follow-up. Thank you and good night.